Hello, I'm Pastor Scott Gordon, pastor of Calvary Baptist Church here in Zapapa. I would like to thank you as you join in on this weekly broadcast and hope you enjoy this message, today's message. And if you are blessed by this message and you would like to be a blessing to us in the ministry, please send your donations to the address listed below. Thank you once again. Enjoy the message. Oh, oh, oh. 
Vacation Bible School will be hosted by Calvary Baptist Church. The dates are July 18th through the 22nd. The meal times are from 5.15 to 6.20 p.m. The opening session is at 6.30 p.m. We have fun and educationally inspiring lessons planned. We have classes for all ages. Our address is 412 North 7th Street. The Reverend Scott Gordon is the host pastor. You listening this morning are my spiritual sisters in Christ. I know I can extend to you, to your sisters, your aunts, your mothers, your grandmothers, your daughters, your in-laws, your outlaws, and your friends, a heartfelt invitation to attend and participate in our fifth annual Issues and Tissues Women's Conference here at Calvary Baptist Church. The speakers are Minister Patricia Jones of Christ the Lamb Church, Minister Deborah Bell, Mount Calvary in Coweta, Oklahoma, and our own Minister Sheree Whiteside. Our goal is 100 women, so we need you. The theme is From Disgrace to Grace. The day, Saturday, the date, September the 10th. The time, 8.30 a.m., the cost, $25. The place, Calvary Baptist Church. We are thanking you in advance for your prayers, your support, your attendance, and your participation. See Sister Erlene Gordon, Sister Minnie Sales. You can see me, Sister Jackie Johnson, or call the church office for more information. You may register at any time. If you need to pay on your registrations, please see Sister Gloria. So I'm going to give you all this poem. It's called, Have You Ever Seen? It's one of my older poems also. It says, have you ever seen hell and fire mixed together fall from the sky? Have you ever seen the rivers and the lakes turn to blood and the fish, they did die? Have you ever seen sap run through the limbs and the leaves of the hanging sycamore tree? Have you ever seen the queen lay egg after egg after egg after egg? Yeah, I'm referring to the queen bee. But when I sit still and everything is peaceful and quiet, and I'm prepared to talk to the Lord, I've never seen the chitter, chitter, chatter of the angry mother bird as she chitter, chitter, chatter to the infidel father with the wandering eye. Or the chitter, chitter, chatter of the one praising the Lord, I could tell because the chitter, chitter, chatters went straight toward the sky. Or the chitter, chitter, chatter of the stranger that just chitter, chitter, chattered as he passed on by. And I said, Lord, with all your wonders and all your miracles, why, why I and the Lord had to remind me again. The why in the I is the reason I allowed my son to come. Be beaten, humiliated, hung on an old rugged cross just to die. Last night, a lot of stuff on my mind Always something gotta deal with in life I feel like just throwing in the towel But I've come too far just to give up now Many situations can wear you down Have you feeling all alone and lose your smile You gotta have faith that everything will be
no matter in your life what's going on tribulations come but they only make you strong yeah no matter no matter no you gotta keep on striving never ever ever giving up always 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 be thankful we've been a day oh but sometimes to uh, 1 King, the 17th chapter. 1 King, the 17th chapter, amen? 1 King, what chapter? 17. And I want to go to verses uh, 7 through 9, if you would. Would you stand with me for the reading of 1 King, the 17th chapter? 1 King, the 17th chapter, amen? God is such an awesome God. How many of you know God is an awesome God? Amen. 1 King, the 17th chapter, beginning with the 7th verse. And a writer begins to write, and he said, And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up. And let me give just a moment. I saw other pages turn because faith cometh by and hearing by the word. And I want you to see that word. Amen. Amen. In 1 King, the 17th chapter, comes on and says, And, when, and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up. And because there has been no rain in the land, and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee down to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain you. I want to talk to you today from what to do, what to do when the brook dries up. What to do when the brook dries up. Have anybody ever had a brook to dry up? Heavenly Father, God, I thank you that I may decrease so you can increase. God, I want to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Because, God, you are so worthy to be praised. And, God, I thank you that you would allow your spirit to rest within the body in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. What to do when the brook dries up? Have you ever felt like you back, your back was up against the wall? The situation was hopeless. There was no way that you were going to make it. Have you ever felt it seemed like you had nothing to look forward to but disappointment, despair, and defeat? 
You just want to throw in the town. Anybody ever felt like that? Such was the case of two widows who discovered that the truth that God will take care of his own. The first widow, along with her son, was confronted with starvation and was preparing the final full meal when the prophet Elijah confronted her. The second widow was deeply into debt and, faced, and was facing having her two sons taken, but God showed up. Has anybody, know God is, has anybody here ever known that God has always shown up and God is always on time? Can I get a witness in the house? Anybody really know that God will show up? Has God ever made a way out of no way? I don't have a witness in the house to say that God has saw you through. Anybody know that God will see you through? Has God really ever made a way? Have you really ever felt like throwing in the towel and God showed up just right at the nick of the time? What do you do when your book dry up? In our text, in our text, as we read the text from 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, you have to understand in this particular time that sin was very rapid, that sin was going on in the church house, outside the church house, in the community, and that Ahab was a king, and before he became king, there was other kings that was wicked. How many of you know that you got to know what you know what you know in the midst of a storm that you got to just trust God? I don't know about you, but I'm in, a, I'm in a position to where I can't do nothing but trust God. Anybody else trusting God today? Anybody really know that God can make a way? Any, anybody really in a situation where you know that God got to show up and God got to make a way out of no way? I don't have a witness in the house today. Anybody really in a tough situation? Anybody in a jam and you know that and can't nobody do it but God? And so the text goes on to say in the 16th chapter of First King that Ahab had decided to go marry Jezebel. How many of you know that you got to be careful with the Jezebel? And you got to be careful with the Ahab because Ahab was one of the wicked kings. And the Bible says that Ahab was wicked than all the kings before him. And the Bible says in the 16th chapter of Ahab, the 28th verse, So Omar slept with his father and was buried in Samaria, and Ahab his son reigned in his stead. So Ahab was reigning in his stead, and in the 38th year of Asaph, king of Judea, became Ahab the son of Omar, the reign over Israel, and Ahab the son reigned over Israel and Samaria 22 years. Can you imagine what would happen if you were under a leadership for 22 years that was wicked? And, and that's what was taking place. And Ahab the son did evil, verse number 30, in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. That tells me that Ahab done more sin than anyone else. Would you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, the wages of sin is death. Too many people don't recognize sin as sin and they tiptoe in it. Sin is sin. And because sin is sin, the wages of it is death. Verse number 31, and it came to pass. As if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sin, the son, and they, he took to the wife Jezebel, the daughter, the king, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. What had happened was Ahab and Jezebel had got married and they had built some Baal, they had built some false worshippers. Can I tell you, when you worship a false god, you're going to fall. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, the god we serve is alive and well today. The God we serve reigns over our life. The God we serve is a God of truth. I would have a witness in the house. And he reared up in an altar for Baal. See what he says? He reared up, he raised up an altar, verse number 32, for Baal in the house of Baal. And he had built it in Samaritan. And because he built that in Samaritan, he was a king there. And Ahab made a govern. And that word in verse number 33 also means a wooden image. So Ahab made a wooden image. And in that wooden image, look at what it says but did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel. Can I tell you what? Sin will, promote, will provoke God to send a consequences on your life. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you got to be careful in sin. Then look what he says. He says, and Israel, the king of Israel that was before him, and in the day that he learned, the Beth Bethlehemite built Jerusalem, he laid the foundation thereof, 
and his firstborn and sat up on the gates, therefore his youngest son, Scarborough, and according to the word of the Lord, which he did spoke by Joshua. Now in Joshua, he was told that there was going to be a punishment for anyone that would build the walls again into Jerusalem, I mean, in the walls of Jerusalem, because Joshua in Jericho, the walls of Jericho in Joshua, the third chapter, he tells them in Joshua, the sixth chapter, the 26th verse, can we go to that real quick? I'm laying a foundation because I know somebody's book is almost dry. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, what do you do when your book is dry or when your book dries up? And then Joshua, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, then Joshua, let's look at Joshua, the sixth chapter, verse number 26. Then we're going to jump back over there to first king. Look at Joshua, sixth chapter, verse number 26. And this was what Jer uh, Joshua had commanded. And Joshua adjourned them at this time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord that rises up and build this city, Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereon unto his firstborn, and his younger son shall he set up the gates on it. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame was noised throughout the country. And it was totally against God to rebuild in Jericho. But because of the wickedness of the king, they rebuilt in Jericho. Would you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, what do you do when the brook dries up? Then it leads us to verse number one in chapter 17. And Elijah the Tishabite, who was the inhabitation of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my what? Word. He says, according to my word. We're, we're all in a place where the brook dries up and God moves on us to another, and moves us to another place. The world who suffers a drought because of Elijah's prayer. Elijah was a man subject to the like passion as well as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth, but the space of three years and six months. Elijah was not alone at the brook. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, when you get in trouble, you are not alone. God is always right there with you. The text tells us that Elijah was a man of subject was a man of God, a man of prayer, a man of power. He always did the things alone. He stood alone on Mount Carmel against the prophet of Baal. He stood alone on Mount Sinai when he stood before God. Would you tell your neighbor, say neighbor, neighbor. some tasks Something. that God gives, you got to just trust God. I don't know about you, but I'm in a point in my life where I can't do nothing but trust God. I don't know about you, but circumstances and situations arrive in our life. But I'm like Solomon says, I'm going to trust in the Lord and lean not to my own understanding, but in all my ways, I'm going to acknowledge him so he can direct my path. Anybody in here really trust in God today? And, and so, so our text tells us in, in 1 Kings 7, 16, 17, 6, Elijah had only bread and meat to eat and water to drink. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh, flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drunk of the brick. The Bible also, and the Bible scholars teach us that Elijah's food and water at the chariot for years before the brook dried. Can I tell you what? There was already a decree that, the, that there was going to be a famine in the land. But because Elijah had a relationship with God, he knew that God can make a way. Anybody facing a hard time right now? Anybody in a crisis right now? Can I tell you what the word says? The word says, my God shall supply all of your needs and, and I want to tell you that the word says that he would never leave you nor forsake you but you just got to trust God when your brook dries up and, and the text goes on the lesson to learn besides the brook is that when God provides resources we may be better off than the world suffering any time any day any night because if God said it that settles it has God ever made a way has God really ever made a way in your life? Do I really got a witness in the house? God can lead you to the brook before the drought comes so God can take care of you when hard times come. God will lead you in a point of your life to where you can't do nothing but trust God. And, and when you trust God, God will do what he said he's going to do. Because his word says that if God be for you, he's more than the world against you. Do I got a witness in the house? 
because God provides for us in unusual ways just as God used the raven to take care of Elisha. God will use the dirtiest thing in your life to bless you because a raven was the dirtiest bird. A raven was dirtier than a crow. But the Bible says that Elijah was fed by the raven. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, when the brook dries up. And see, some of y'all reminds me of the brook. Because I hate to bust your bubble, but some of y'all are dry in the spirit. Some of you ain't got no spirit, none whatsoever. Your preacher can tell you to shout, and you still yet won't shout. The preacher can tell you that God's going to make a way, and you still yet act like you're sitting on a log. And the Bible ought to allow you to be stirred up because there is a gift out on the inside. I can understand Elijah at the brook. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. There's a spiritual famine going on in the house. As the spiritual well has dried up because of sin, that's exactly what the brook represents in the Bible. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. But hold on. God has a ram in the bush. Good times are not forever. Elijah didn't have a care in the world as long as he was by the brook. He had food twice a day. He had it in the morning and the evening. Because, and then uh, God allowed the brook to dry up to show that God would still yet make a way. So I just want to suggest to some of y'all this morning that God is moving you out of your comfort zone to show you that he's still yet God. God is allowing your sources to dry. God is allowing your job to close. God is allowing your bank to be insufficient. God is allowing you in a situation to show that he's God all by himself. Anybody ever been in a situation where the doctor stepped out? And God just stepped in. Anybody ever been to a situation that you didn't know how you were going to make it? But God showed up. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. God shows up. And where God shows up, God always shows out. Sometimes we cause our own brooks to dry up. Uh, can I say that again? Sometimes we cause our own brooks to dry up. Because Elijah prayed, there was no rain. Elijah prayed for the rain to stop. And eventually, let me tell you something. There's power in your words. Can I just say that again? There's power in what you say. There's power when you speak to God. When you speak to God, be careful if you're in a relationship with God because God will allow your words to come because his Bible, my Bible says, his words shall not return void. Do I got a witness in the house that there's power in the word? Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, that's power in the words. And the Bible goes on to say that the dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Verse number two says, and the word of the Lord came unto him again, saying, get thee hence and turn eastward and hide thyself by the brook chariot that it is before Jordan. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, when God moves you, you better move. Are you, some of y'all act like y'all want to stay right there. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, when God moves you, you better move. Because if you don't move when God says move, God has a fish waiting just for you. Oh, you didn't believe that, did you? Ask old Jonah. Jonah go down to Nineveh, and Jonah decided to stay right there. Because I believe that some of y'all are in a situation that God is speaking to tell you to move out of that situation, and you are staying in that situation. And if you stay in that situation, you got a fish ready to keep you and take you under. And then God will bring you back out. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, some of the brooks that dries up in our life, we cause it ourselves. When your brook dries up, Listen to the voice of God. And it, could, and it came to pass, like what the word says. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, Arise. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Arise. Why you sit by your neighbor if you don't want to look at them? They're not that ugly, are they? You don't hate them that bad. You love them, right? Because we're all Christians. Look at the other neighbor. Tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Arise. Arise. And look what he says. He says, Arise. Get thee to Zephyr. Now, isn't it funny that God will lead you where trouble is already at just to show that he's God all by himself? 
God knew that the woman was there in Zephyr. God knew that the woman was already going to die. And then I ought to also tell you that God will send somebody to give you a word to make you arise out of a dead situation. I ought to have a witness in the house today. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, arise. And then be prepared to hear what God says. See, if you don't hear what God says, you will always stay in the same situation. And the Bible says, arise. Will somebody just shout, arise? Will somebody just shout, arise? And the Bible says, arise, get thee to Zephyr, which belongs to Zidion, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain you. What do you do when your brook dry up? When your brook dry up, God has another place to feed you and to use you. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, where one door closed, God got another door to open. Oh, look at your other neighbor, tell him like you really mean it. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, when one door closed, God got another door to open. And God expects you, God expects you to eat at his commandment and to move at his commandment. We must obey all God's commandment, whether we like it or not. When God moves you, it may be that God is planning greater miracles at the next place. Because I'll tell you, one level, more devil. Higher the level, higher the devil. But you got to trust God. God provided at Zarephath. Look at what he says. When your brook dries up, God may send you in the middle of a drought. Zarephath means the place of testing. Anybody in a test right now? I don't know about you, but I'm in a place of tests. Can I get a really witness in the house that you would be honest with yourself? Is anybody going through a test? Anybody really going through a test? You are going through a test right now, and you are wondering where this test came from. Well, I got good news for you. It's just a test. And Elijah was led from, Elijah was led from the frying pan into the fire. Can I say that again? Elijah was led from the, fry, from the flying pan, from the frying pan into the fire. God will place you in the fire to show you that he's God all by himself. So whatever you're going through, can I just tell you, keep the faith. Zephyr was outside the promised land because many times we can get outside the promised land. But God is an awesome God. And in the Bible says that as he was there, it is in the land we call Lebanon. God may lead you away from the promised land where his people are located. That's what he did to Jonah. Go down to Nineveh because I got some people in Nineveh. And then also, Zephyr wasn't so bad. The widow planned to eat one meal and die. It was that bad. So he arose and went to Zephyr. Enjoy the abundance. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. Say neighbor. Enjoy the abundance right now. Because tomorrow, God may lead you to Zephyr. And, and then look what the text says. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. When we do God's word, God makes ways. Out of no way. Then it says, and the raven bought him bread and fish in the morning and bread and fish in the evening. God can do a difficult miracle for you in Calvary this morning. If God can use a raven to feed Elisha, God can use your enemy, God can use your job, God can use your neighbor to do anything but fail. Amen. Notice with me in the text, if you don't mind with me, and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up and because there had been no rain in the land. See, I don't know about you, but Friday was pretty hot. Anybody was outside Friday? And then on yesterday, it was pretty hot. On yesterday, I was driving a friend's truck, and he didn't have no AC in his truck. Y'all didn't hear me, did you? And so I drove his truck from Tulsa to Sepulpa. And I thought that I was going to die. I rolled the window down, and it was hot air blowing in my face. So I thought I rolled the window up. And when I rolled the window up, I felt like I was in a sauna. And I realized that we can take life for granted. Because I couldn't wait to get back to my truck to turn the AC on. 
Some of y'all are in a hot situation. You can't wait till God get you out of that hot situation to give you some cool air. But I need to tell you that even in the hot truck, God was right there in the truck with me. I need to tell somebody today that even in your situation, God is right there with you. Would you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say neighbor, even in your situation, God is right there with you. Notice the statement found in both places, the word of the Lord. What do you have in the place of prosperity, in the place of poverty? The promise of the Bible, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And can I tell you that no matter what you're going through, God will be your shepherd. You can fight it because you are afraid of the future, but you can't stop it with all the forces that God has in place. You can fear it because you don't trust God to provide for the future. You can faint and not be moved. You can flounder because you won't listen to the direction of the word of the Lord, or you can follow the word of God because you know God will provide where he guides. Anybody know God will provide? Where God guides, God provides. What to expect at the next place? Looking forward to a home cooked meal? I got a lot of widow friends. I got a lot of widows in the church that knows how to cook bread. But the Bible says in this text, and it came to pass after a while, that the brook had dried up. And a lot of times in, in, in this text, I saw that the brook could be a hiding place. God will allow you to be in a place to where God can minister to you all by yourself. Because many times you can be distracted because of the cares of this world. And God will get you in a place, take your resources to make you trust him and look to the hills from which cometh your help. God will allow you to get in a place and hide you. You don't believe that? What does David say in Psalms 91? David says, he who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty God. When you do God's will, he will provide a hiding place just for you. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say neighbor. God has a place just for you. And it came to pass when the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, Arise, get to the Zaphak which belongs to Zidion, and dwell there. For behold, I have commanded a widow there to sustain you. Anybody know God will make a way? Amen. I thank God that I'm like the songwriter. I never would have made it. But because of him, I made it. You don't know what I've been through because you're not me. And I don't know what you've been through because I'm not you. But one thing I know, that I'm still alive because of the goodness and the grace of God. I have come to realize that God will make a way out of no way. I come to realize, Kenneth, that when the brook dries up, that God has a ram in the bush. I come to realize that where God guides, God will provide. Have anybody ever had your back up against the wall? Well, you didn't know which way to go. Elijah was sent over there to Zarephath to a woman that had just a little bit of meal and a little bit of oil. The text goes on to say that Elijah says to her, fetch me a cake. Bring me a drink of water. And as she went, said, fetch me a cake. Do I got anybody in here that's broke? Honestly, do I got anybody in here that got just a little bit of money? That's all you got, just a little bit of money. Anybody, Mika, how much money do you got? How, how much money right now? Cash, how much cash do you got? How much? Bring me that $15. Give me that $15. I want to show you a phrase on what God can do. And so what Elijah done is Elijah says, break me a glass of water. And on the way, bring me the $15. All she had was $15, but she trusted the man of God. And because she trusted the man of God, God made a way out of no way. Anybody know God will make a way? Can I show you what God does when we trust God? And, and Mika, come back up here for a second. And can I show you what God does? God makes ways out of no ways. And all she gave was $15, but then God blessed her with double more than what she had. Can I tell you what God can do? God can take your little and make a lot. And then you know what he does? Mika, would you come back up here a minute? He blesses her, and then what she gave God, God gives right back to her. Do I have a witness in the house? Anybody know God will make a way? Anybody really know God to make a way? And so the woman made God a cake. And when
when the woman made the man of God a cake, the Bible says that even in the midst of a drought, that the woman never had a lack. Can I tell somebody today, you may not get with me, but I'll get with you. Can I tell you that God will make a way out of the way? Don't play with me. Is there anybody here who knows that God will make a way? And you may be down to your very last dime, but God will test you with exactly what he gave you to see where your faith is. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. And the Bible goes on to say in the text that she bought him a cake, Christy. And when she bought him a cake, the Bible says that the prophet ate the cake, gave some to the man and the woman that ate the cake. Can I just tell somebody in the house today that God will make a way? It may seem like you're going through some hard times right now. But if you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all the other things shall be added unto you. Somebody say, Reverend, I'm going to find financial situation can I tell you why you're in a financial situation because you don't put God first if you put God first God will make a way somebody say my relationship ain't what it ought to be can I tell you what you will never have the relationship you want until you get in a relationship with God anybody know God will make a way you can't you can't play with God you gotta trust God you can't ask God for something if you don't want to obey God because if you obey God God will make a way preach Reverend I'll preach anyhow all by myself because I need to tell somebody today that's in a situation it may seem bad but if you keep on holding on to God's unchanging hand and then it goes on to say that there was another widow that had two sons and she had two sons and there was a debt collector that came to get the two sons and the bible says that when the debt collector came that the man of god asked what do you have can you tell your neighbor say neighbor if the prophet or the man of god say a word you ought to listen to the word if it lines up with the word of god and if it don't line up if it don't line up we took his neighbor and tell your neighbor, said, neighbor, I'm still alive because he kept me. I'm still alive through danger seen and unseen. I'm still alive because he spoke a word in my life. I know I should have been dead and gone, but because of what he done on Calvary. Anybody know that there's power on Calvary? Anybody know that there's power because he got up on the third day? Anybody know that there's victory in Jesus? Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Because understand this, it sounds very foolish for the man of God to ask the widow, to go and bake a cake it sounds very foolish for the man of God to ask you to do something that you've never done before but God just wants to know do you really trust him anybody really trust God anybody really know God will make a way anybody really know I know I've asked you that five or six times but somebody need to know that God will make a way out of no way and then mother mother digs the Bible says that the woman with two sons all she had was a little bit of oil and a little bit of joy and a few little parts but the bible says that the man of god spoke to her and told her to go to her neighbor's house and all throughout the community and get all the parts that she can get and the bible says that she ran out of oil out of pots before she ran out of oil would you just look at your neighbor tell your neighbor say neighbor whatever you're going through if you can trust god whatever you're going through if you just know that God will make a way out of no way, he will make a way. Anybody know God will make a way? Anybody really know God will make a way? Anybody know God has brought you through danger seen and unseen? I bet there's some woman out that way that's been raising her kids all by herself and she can say God has made a way out of no way. I believe that there's some widow out there that said I didn't know how I was going to make it when I lost my spouse. But God has made a way. Would you look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, the Lord will make a way. When you're up against the wall, trust God. Why should you trust him, Ryan? You should trust him because I know that God will make a way. I remember, Ryan, and it's good that your brother is sitting over there. I'm glad that Joel is in the house. I remember, Ryan, when I was at Joel's wedding, or Joel was at your wedding, I 
remember Joe getting ready to start up a tree bit, a landscaping business. I remember Joe and his wife was a school teacher, and the school teacher, his wife was a little bit worried. His wife was like, she don't know if he ought to start it. But God told him to start the landscaping business. And, and Joe, I hear that you got more yards than you know what to do about it. I know that God will make a way when you launch it out in the deep. And the reason that God made a way is because you obeyed God and launched out in the deep. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, arise. Arise and go to Zephyr. Arise and go to the place that God has told you to go. And I know it may seem crazy. It may seem just ridiculous that God would send you to a place that is dry. It would seem crazy that God would send you to a place where the bones are dead. But he says the prophet and he asks him, can these bones live again? And he goes to say, yes, these bones can live again. He says, speak a word. And when he spoke a word early, all of a sudden the bones began to get skin on it. And when the bones began to get skin on it, all of a sudden the bones came alive. I asked God every once in a while, God, can these bones live again? He said, Scott, speak a word. And let him know the spirit of the Lord is in this place. Let him know that the spirit of the Lord lives and reigns in each one of their lives. And he says, you will be able to see the lives come alive again. You'll be able to see lives and relationships being built for the glory and the kingdom of God. Can somebody say, speak a word? Because if you speak a word, when the brook dries up, God will send water. Can I tell you about a man named Jesus who came down through 42 generations? He came down to save a dying world such as you and I. Uncle Marshall, he was put in a borrowed grave, but he arose on that third day. And because he arose on that third day, when they wanted to give up on you in Seattle, it was the Holy Spirit of God that raised you up, healed you, set you free, because he said, by his stripes, you are healed. And the same God that did it in Seattle can do it at Calvary Baptist Church. Whatever your situation is, whatever your, whatever your book is, whatever's dried up in your life, God can, God will bring it back to life. Wherever you are in life today, whatever you're facing in life, whatever the situation may be, just know that God can, God will. Elijah's brook was there and the ravens fed him. Your brook this morning could be your bank account is short. Your brook this morning can be you and your husband and spouse, you and your husband and wife are not communicating. Your brook this morning can be your children has went wayward. Your brook can be whatever the situation may be you're facing in your life. But I got good news today to tell you that God can, God will, God shall make a way out of no way. Would you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, this too shall pass. God will make a way. Now, if you know that this too will pass, can you just do me a favor and just shout thank you? No, no. You can shout it louder than that. Because I just believe that if you believe that God will make a way, that you will walk by faith and not by sight. Now, now, can I ask you to lose your mind for just a second like you're all by yourself and just shout thank you like you just received your blessing. I believe that somebody really feel like they received a situation turning around. Can I just give you an opportunity for just a moment to just give God some praise? I'm done with my... I'm done with my message. But I believe that if you've already received your miracle, if you've already received your healing, that you ought not have a problem with giving God some praise in advance. 
Some of you all ought to praise him for what he's bringing you through right now. Because many of you all are saying that you're at the end of your rope, but you can see in the spiritual realm that you are tying a knot in your rope. Can I just suggest to you today, hold on, hold on. God will make a way out of no way. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Would you look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I'm just going through, but I still got my joy, still got my peace, still got my love. What to do when the brook dries up? You may be in a situation where you're hit by the brook because God would allow you to be hit in order for him to make a way. Can I just make one last point in closing? Here this raven was, was getting food and taking it to Elisha. And can I tell you what? That was really against the principle or the moral of Elijah's belief. But because God will, do, God will bless you in ways that you would never expect him to bless you if you would just position yourself for God to bless you. Would you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I'm getting in a position to be blessed. And can you get yourself in a position to be blessed? And so as you position yourselves this morning to be in a position to be blessed, I challenge you to trust God. It may sound crazy. It may sound crazy. Mika said all she had was $15. The widow said all she had was a little bit of milk, just enough to bake one cake. Mika said, I couldn't even go to Walmart and get a cake. She said, but now I can go down to Melton's Bakery and get a cake because she trusted God. Can I tell you exactly where you're at today? God wants to meet you right there. He wants to meet you right there. I want to invite you to stand with me this morning. And there may be somebody here today that's up against the brook. And your brook can represent many things. And that brook could be many things. If you're here and you got your back up against the wall, and you're up against the brook, I challenge you to take that step of faith. You got to move. I'm a firm believer that God you will make a way. As a musician plays, the invitation has you're been extended. Thank you. Once again, Pastor Scott Gordon, I hope this message has been a blessing to you. Hope you've enjoyed the word that's been preached today. If this message has been a blessing to you and you would like to be a blessing, please send your donations to the address listed below. Thank you once again for joining this weekly broadcast.